lead into the re, uh, the national championship, while the other, uh, the loser of this, has to go play, do the play-ins. But we are in pick and ban phase, and there it is, the Swain ban from Maryville. They don't want that on the rift since they are not first pick. Uh, Columbia College going back to the Zach ban. Banning out the Lulu, do you think that was a big impact of Maryville's success? I think it was annoying. <laughs> I think if yeah, you're, it was definitely if annoying you're Columbia annoying. College, you might say, um, hey, Gen the Lulu man. was not fun to play against. It also is very strong in the lane phase. As you saw, they had that 2v2 kill for Maryville's side, and that was really a big part of why they were able to snowball the game so hard. It's because you, once you had that Ash Lulu lane ahead, you can rotate that Ash up in the mid lane, up into the top lane, and you have that Lulu to back them up. So neutralizing that lane a little bit more could help them. Now a Jin ban coming out. We didn't. We saw a good bit of. Uh, I think it was only 180 carry ban though. But a Jin ban coming out was something that I didn't expect. There is the Jana ban for Columbia College. That was to be expected. One of West's more favorable champions in his switch to support role. Uh, you, would you leave the Caitlyn up or ban it here? Because that seems to be the the pivot mm, pick. I might, I might take away the Cassiopeia just as a comfort. Mm. But there's also obviously a lot, a lot of other, other stuff you can. I was just about to say Olaf, and it gets banned right here because he's so strong. Well, um, but of course, that knocks the jungler down a peg. Hmm? That's right. The, the Kalen is up. Uh, the Cassiopeia is still up, as we're talking about. Everyone will, RL will take the Kalen right here. Uh, you do leave up Zyrakhan or Prototype. You just fall back on that Ash. Uh, Zyrakhan is something that Evan, RL, and Dean have played so much. I, I don't know if it's been as popular for Prototype in West as that duo. But the Talia locking in your mid lane this early, That's blind confidence. to whatever Julian wants to play. And Julian's definitely very high ranked, very talented player. CKG also nonetheless, but still that is so much confidence locking in this Talia early. And when Caitlyn already has ways to get over that wall, it mm -hmm. kind of doesn't make as much sense as if they locked in that Jin per se. Now we do see a Karma coming in. Uh, ten, it is a flex pick, but the Karma can match the wave clear of the Talia. It can't really match the global pressure that the Talia provides. Or if you take it to bot lane, that's a really annoying bot lane. Talking Kaelin Karma, just immense amount of poke. But we also do have the Morgana still up, which Kate Morgana, very annoying lane. We have all the tank support still up that did not get, or that got banned last mm. game. We do see a Camille coming out, and once again, flex. It could go into the jungle, it could go top lane for Misty Stumpy. We'll have mm -hmm. to wait and see. Uh, one adaptation I think is uh, noticeable to look at from Maryville is not doing a support ADC combo in the first rotation. They only get one or they don't even pick it at all. This draft is a bit strange, <laughs> George, it, especially compared to the last one. The the Camille as well, if you're taking that into the top lane where it likely would be, and you're potentially blind picking that, assuming the trundle goes into the jungle position because you yep. wouldn't really want to blind pick the, the trundle top lane either into something that's not necessarily a tank. The Talia is still blind. So, so the fact that Julian didn't pick his mid laner uh, he has a deep champion pool. He's willing to undergo these second phase bans, but since Bucksack didn't pick the jungler, this is now the opportunity for more targeted bans such as the Skarner. Well, with the Poppy ban coming out, uh, that that's a the Poppy W is a hard counter to Camille whenever she E's in. Uh, you would have to assume that this Camille is going to go top lane, especially with uh, Maryville showing so much confidence that it is a top lane Camille with two jungle bans coming so out. And. The Shen also getting denied. Another counter to Camille in lane with his taunt and uh, the Shen W denying auto attacks. We are on to the second rotation of picks. Uh, do you expect to see a support here or a top? I expect to see a top because Warren was just Ooh. locked in. And it looks like Saskio is just going to be perfectly comfortable playing that one again. I don't blame him. And look at how many uh, parallels we can draw between this game one and game two composition for Maryville. They put a lot of the same pieces back together with the Ash and the Orn. And these were really the key elements that allowed them to catch out so many picks in that game. Uh, Evan Arles, Whoa, oh, we actually locked it in. Scary Nocturne. Ooh. Talk about a damage increase from the jungler last game. And the Alistar coming in for Dean. That and that is the Karma going to mid lane, the Camille going to top lane, Nocturne in the jungle. Okay. And a Tom Kench coming out for West. You, you that is still left up. That's one support that we mentioned. How was uh, it's very critical support. Mm -hmm. And that Kench will be great into Nocturne, and whenever he just uses that paranoia on someone, you will be able to eat them up. Assuming you're in range, because now they extended the Nocturne paranoia to be very long. If you, <laughs> you're gonna have to rely a lot on voice communication to actually yes. be able to find your teammates. So that's something that is part of the reason why Nocturne is not as strong in a competitive setting as he is in solo queue, because you don't really have that same level of coordination. But we have to talk about what Columbia College actually did to transition this 
first game composition into the second game one because unlike Maryville, they look nothing like they, what they drafted yeah, in that no, last there's game. There's no front line except for an Alistar maybe. Columbia says they don't care because guess what? They picked a lane that lost the 2v2 bottom lane in that Kaisa Thresh, but now they have Caitlyn and Honest. they have a Karma mid lane. They're ready to put on this show where Julian and um, Dean play support and you have all these people that can pop off. Cumbia is throwing all of these carries at the wall, say Stumpy, Bucksack, Evan RL. One of you surely has to be good enough to carry this game. I have to say, if you showed me these two team comps and told me one is Columbia College, one is Maryville, which is which, I would think Maryville was the Columbia College's draft. Maybe, maybe if Hollywood so was kids. still playing. Yeah. May- <laughs> well, no, even then, like, that's just how aggressive Maryville style tends to be. And I think you look, look at Maryville's draft, very team fight oriented. We have a global with the Talia being able to ult down bot lane or top lane. The Orin once again being a strong presence with his ultimate. And now a Trundle. So even though it's not as much CC, you still have a lot of annoyances with Talia E, W, uh, Talia's ult wall, Trundle's pillar coming in. And now you have Tom Kench eating up whenever an Alistar uh, headbutt pulverizes in. Or whenever, as you said, not during paranoia and Camille E. So uh, Maryville has this much more standard draft where I feel like if nothing goes right for Columbia, they will just win by default. Because once these carries, if they don't get up to leads, if they don't get these advantages in their lanes, if they don't get these solo kills, if they if Nocturne is not able to get off the ground, especially as well as Camille. They're kind of going to fall off. Karma doesn't really have damage to contribute as much as, say, the Cassiopeia would from the last game. Yep. So instead of uh, Columbia having the late-game scaling, in Game 2, it's completely flipped. So Columbia is just going to be trying to get all the advantages they can. They're going to have Alistar try and get out of this Caitlyn lane eventually once they get that first blood turret and Roman make plays, as well as Julian's Karma to follow up with a lot of support. And they can just enable these carries because you have three attack damage dealers and a Karma to speed them up and get them in range. There's just a lot that could um, snowball very quickly if Columbia gets ahead. You know, I like how you mentioned uh, the Kate Alistar getting the first lane. That's why you pick Caitlyn. Caitlyn is very good in controlling the lane phase. Her early game is incredible. But Ash has shown to be one of the counters to Caitlyn in just neutralizing the lane. Having the ability to volley and slow down the Caitlyn, slow down the Alistar, neutralize the wave clear push that Caitlyn provides with her Q, it's going to be tough for Evan RL and Dean. We have to see if they do get the first turret because Caitlyn heavily relies on that to scale into the mid game. With a weak mid game, once she gets her BF sword, she's not really that relevant until three items. You need the double zeal. You need the infinity edge. You need time to scale. This is the only hope. And if you don't get that time to scale, Caitlyn's useless. She's only a trap bot. Well, she does fall way. She falls off in the mid game, but then she curves back up in the very late game. Mm-hmm. So they mm-hmm. still have a little bit of insurance there with the support. However, I really like what Maryville had brought to the table in this second game, too. I'm not completely sold on this Talia blind pick, <laughs> but they replicated the same success in these Orn and Ash picks. And they were able to get this Tom Kench pick, which is just going to do wonders for them because when one of these three carries from the Columbia side tries to jump in and just annihilate, execute, catch out someone, it's going to be very frustrating for them because if Tom Kench is around, they're going to be perfectly safe. Uh, you're right about that. And now we do have champions loading onto the rift. Uh, who do you think is going to win game two based off of pick and ban? Uh, we both said Columbia College. You can't just one ask one. that of a cast. Yeah, you can't ask that right away, right away. I'll give my pick. Uh, personally, I think the way Maryville played, it's all great, but Columbia College will come back. Drake Porter, phenomenal coach. I think he has their head screwed on right now, uh, and I have a lot of trust in these players to come back and do it for Columbia College because I want game five. I want silver scrapes to be played. Uh, game five would be awesome. <laughs> I do think Maryville has a lot of great ways to this game. I do think Columbia is going to want to come back. So I'm, I'm thinking it's going to be a pretty equal chance, actually. But if imagine if Maryville wins this game. It's going to be 2-0. Columbia College will have their backs against the wall and have to reverse sweep this one. That's not a situation they've ever been in before. So if Maryville can take this one, it will be a ton of pressure off of their shoulders. They just have to win one game after that. Well, right away, Columbia College already getting uh, capitalizing on advantages from last game. Buckzack does have items. That's very clutch. So getting into the game, we do see a five-man fan from both teams. Uh, no one looking to make any proactive plays. Just wait until minions spawn. Help your jungler. But we do see Julian going in. Julian and Buckside going in. The Mantra Q will hit Cat Ears. 
chunk them for just a solid 20 percent damage maybe 15 percent yeah tell. julian's wishing he had spelthy said right now but you know <laughs> he's a mid laner so it feels bad stuck on karma duty for the day that's right uh another thing to note prototype once again taking the doran's blade into evan rl's doran shield last game we saw that it didn't matter prototype straight up won that lane uh, wanted to see if that's any more impact with a more aggressive support with both the Alistar and the Tom Kench. Uh, one thing we do see, though, that is different from the game prior. Bugsnack is starting bot side once again, but Cat Ear starting top side at the red buff with help from the orange. Sasuke will be getting the lane late, uh, but as well as Columbia College's bot lane. Yep. Uh, blue buff does not do nearly as much for Trundle as that red buff because he's very auto attack focused for his damage. <sighs> Um, Nocturne, of course, also someone that would like the auto attacks, but it's always great to have your bot lane leash for you regardless. Interestingly enough, because of that top side start, we are going to see Prototype and West have the shove again, so they will actually probably hit level 2 first. And this could mean a lot in terms of not falling prey to the Caitlyn Strong level 1. That's right, especially with uh, Evan RL taking uh, time to queue champions instead of the minions on this Caitlyn. West is applying so much pressure with these uh, tongue slaps, I guess you could say. Applying the slow, it will be a very annoying lane for Evan if he cannot get out from underneath the turret. And they were confident in letting this Caitlyn fall through the draft into that first pick because they were confident that they could run this Ash into it. And Prototype had a ton of success with it in game one. It looks like something he was very comfortable on. Had a great scoreline, only died once at the end, but of course his team was able to close out the game. Oh, CKG might be in trouble here. No mana. Oh, CKG, Nocturne coming in. Bugsack on the plan, but very good. Uh, flashes out. Oh, he still gets rooted. Bugsack with a fear, but flash in from Cat Ears with the trundle. Pillar knocking away Julian, but uh, First Blood still going to Julian on CKG. And they're still chasing Cat Ears underneath the turret, but he will escape. What a lovely uh, W from the Karma, keeping him rooted. The chain CC into the fear. Bug, uh, Cat Ears could not do anything. CKG couldn't do anything else after using the flash. That's the play that Columbia College is needing for this type of team composition and to bounce back from last game. Yeah, and Bucksack was first on the play, unlike what we were seeing a lot of the last game where Cat Ears was just everywhere. But it just Close. makes such, such a huge difference when you're there first. And CKG had to burn that flash to try and get out of the tether range. Still got rooted. And then Cat Ears flashes over the wall into River to try and save his teammate. But at that point, it's already too late because oh, CKG Jones didn't in the have top, a fight. Bugsack, Cat Ears does not he see Bucksack and... What what a class what positioning right there. Another early game scaling, especially on this Nocturne, which can if they gets ahead early, the damage is ridiculous on all of Nocturne's kit. But that kill going to Misty Stumpy on the Camille. And as we all know for Camille, oh the flash is stunned. Sasuke has to get out of this. There is the Orn and a flash still fleet on a turret. Bugzak. Will it go? Oh, Sasuke. Oh, turn around, Sasuke with a turnaround. Wow, what an Orn Q right there, being able to turn that kill around. I didn't really trust that if they were going to dive. I think the Nocturne is too squishy at this early stage in the game, as well as the Orange, just really hard to turret dive with the amount of uh, CC chain and escape and shields that he has in his kit. Yeah, it looked a little bit sketchy when Skaskio stayed around pushed up that far when his jungler just died and he saw a Bookstack top, but he actually was able to have the comp turn that one around and if you're going to be able to do that i guess why not stick around that's going to be a great kill going over at him and now bucksack didn't get either of the two kills that their team has and he has a death now so he's going to be a little bit back on par with trundle's clear that's right uh, one thing i was about to say before that top lane uh, mishap dive happened for columbia college oh well as can't get now dean going in for a headbutt pulverized combo traps all will not land a chain to cc and it just simple disengage but I was going to say, with the kill going onto the Camille, early Sheen pickup is like very important for the Camille. That's what a lot of Camille players prioritize. But with the death happening, oh, we do see Caddy in mid lane. Julian, three in mid lane. That's another death. I just want to talk about Camille getting Sheen. That's a good power spike for Camille. Well, they knew Julian had no flash because he used it in the attempt to kill CKG, yes. which worked, but then... Uh, Karma had no flash, so it's easy for you to run them down as long as you hit that seismic shove and you have the trundle pillar to back you up. Even Saskio found a timely run from the top lane. Wasn't even necessary, but that's going to be a great kill back in the hands of Cat Ears now. That's going to equalize yep. things out in the mid lane with Lee actually having a pretty nice CS lead considering how strong Karma is in the early levels. Well, I like how you're talking about uh, not having being that far ahead in terms of Bugsack not getting either of the kills. And now his opponent in the jungle, Cat Ears, has a kill on that Trundle. 
And that's just gonna snowball the trundle. Unlucky ahead. prototype, just missed the cannon on 8.7. Mm, feels bad, man. Which uh, should be an easy secure. 66 gold getting cash in for Dean and Evan RL. Obviously, gold lead so much better. Columbia College is gonna win strictly off of that. All jokes aside, though, Columbia College does have a 300, 400 now uh, gold lead early game. Uh, let's check in all the CS. Seems pretty even. There's a deficit top lane for Saskio down. 12 right now. Other than that, things are starting to even out. Uh, I guess a good thing to note, it's not a Cloud Drake. It's a Mountain Drake. It is. So, and... priority bot lane will be heavy come 6 when Ash does get arrow. But as of right now, no mana on the Ash. You're going to have to wait. That will be key. But really, both of these teams will be looking towards the bot lane because when you're playing Talia, you have that Weaver as well, and you really want to make use of that in the bottom lane because that's the easiest place to gank. There's right. the highest potential for reward against two members, and if you can call Cat Ears down there to slow them with the pillar and make it even harder for them to escape, Alistar has no way over the wall without that flash, so you can make things very difficult for them if you time your roams well. Well, if Maryville times it right, Saskio's teleport will come up a few seconds before Misty Stumpy's, and that could be huge in terms of perfect timing in the engage in bot lane. That could easily swing a 5v4 fight in the snap of a finger. For sure. Well, uh, not, not a lot much happening right now. No, just farming, 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 especially with flashes down in key lanes like mid lane and jungle. There's not a lot happening. But uh, I think, where do you go from right now? We have ultimates in the top You hit level 6 is what you yeah. need on these junglers. Yeah, and Buckstack just got his. Which, there you go. Buckstack in level 6. I'm going to have her ult level 1. So let's start there. Uh, just a little trade in top lane. The Talia having ult is key. Sasuke is going to be up in about 5% left on that cooldown. Uh, prototype taking some damage from the Caitlyn. He is looking to back, but... Uh, it will win or I'll let them. That's a free push on me. Both of these AD carries are sitting on upwards of 2,000 gold, so they would like to get a back in. Prototype, especially cool. since he has almost no mana and very low health as well. So eventually, the Caitlyn priority will win out in this lane phase, getting the shove and denying Prototype that wave. Uh, West was not able to hold it for him, okay. and we're just going to have Blue Buff trade off to CKG. So now that CKG has that Weaver's Wall and this bot lane is starting to reset, and Prototype has that ult available, I would really like to see them find time to clear out the vision in the river and actually execute a bot lane dive. Uh, I. I would too. You built this composition specifically for that. Well, in theory, specifically for that. But one thing I do want to note is that Evan RL is coming back to lane with tier two boots, a full Berserker Grease buy, because he went back to base with 2,500. Whereas Prototype, no boots right now. It's strictly a uh, BF sort pickaxe. Heavy reliance on West to be able to devour him if anything goes awry. Absolutely. It's going to be a lot harder for Ash to escape without boots if Tom Kench is not in the vicinity. And when there's a Nocturne running amok, that could be quite the concern if Wes goes over into the river to get vision control and leaves his low and 80 carry behind. Ash is not exactly known for her mobility. On the other hand, Caitlyn wants those Berserkers Greaves to have the movement speed to kite out and chase down people. So in an isolated environment, Caitlyn would probably be able to run away and chase down the Ash. So that is an advantage when you have the Caitlyn range at your, on your side. Uh, something they haven't really been doing in this lane is actually comboing the Dean Alistar knockup with the Caitlyn traps into a lot of damage. However, the poke was still enough to force Prototype back. I think I've only seen it once as of right now, and uh, the, both traps missed. Uh, Julian. Combo, but Julian getting picked off in the mid lane. Does a good job of running away. The paranoia coming in, going straight for the Talia. Talia getting rooted and feared, but two flashes from Bugsack and Julian. Julian, what was that? Got him. Okay, Trundle with the flash. Ult going in. It's what a party. Ult from Prototype, but Dean going in. Uh, Headbutt pulverized on the Tom Kench, but Prototype and West are already here. Caitlyn just now getting up. Uh, oh, I like the counter from Bugsack, but... When you're that far underneath turret, why are you burning flash, especially against a Talia and a Trundle, who have so much stick potential? Mm -hmm. That was pretty deep onto CKG. CKG actually flashed while the Paranoia was in flight because it would then take Bucksack under the turret, so he would take even more damage and have to try and flash out. Out of turret. Right, right. so that effectively flash. saved him and denied any chance of Bucksack being able to follow up on now um, Cat Ears. So Cat Ears was able to run Julian down with the flash. They both burned it. So that is another kill going over to Cat Ears. 
One thing I do want to talk about, though, uh, the TP was burned from Misty Stumpy. Sasuke still has teleport available, but what yeah. an ult from Prototype. Knocking the Camille out of her E and just stunning her there. While a kill was not picked up off of that, it's still incredible being able to do that. And now right. we have a summer spell advantage for Sasuke. As we talked about, Weaver's Wall, Sasuke teleport, down bot lane, especially with Mountain Drag up. But, well, Weaver's uh, Wall's we, down. <laughs> it is down, but whenever it's up. Soon. <laughs> And you can um, tell both of these combo. teams are playing at such a high level because when you have that mid skirmish breakout, that 2v2, both bot lanes were almost immediately there as soon as possible. Great they run. did not really Great spend time dilly dallying over their minion waves uh, like a lot of teams in the south will do. They immediately <laughs> rotated up into that mid lane, ready to be Ooh. there for the play. And even Misty Stumpy was there as well. I can attest to that. I am known as the uh, greedy mf -er. Mississippi State because I like farm too much. But uh, one thing to note. Uh, Bugzak soloed Rift Herald while we are talking about this, talking about the play that just occurred. So priority in terms of pushing goes to Columbia College. Now you're setting up uh, talks when you can give up the Mountain Drake potentially for first blood turret with uh, the Rift Herald, just depending on map rotations. Prototype getting a cheeky little back off right there. West, we'll see if he holds the wave this time. Yep, I don't know if he's gonna. Okay, Caitlyn's well, actually I, backing I think, off. I think this is a really good situation. You have cat ears down uh, mm -hmm. in tri bush. So if they do see, I say just let them back. And now you have a free dragon. You do see cat ears moving over to the the mountain drake right now. And West does hold the minion wave. Is able to this time. Cat ears. Oh, Sika Geno flash. Oh, Sika Geno flash going in. Goodbye. Is rooted. Is feared. But in response, you do get the dragon. But as we were saying. Uh, you trade the Mountain Drake for a First Blood turret. Will Rift Herald be popped mid lane? We'll have to see. Yeah, Rift it Herald going like over it. so early to uh, CC is an advantage. They prioritized that in the last game too. Even though they were so far behind, they were able to find time to trade the life of one of their members for that Rift Herald. And they will pop it in this mid lane. This could be huge if they get it. But is it too late though? Now Trundle and Tom Kench have both had time to reset. Uh, There's no damage here someone? though. West getting fleed, now rooted, fear and rooted. There is no damage to the turret, and this should be just an easy cleanup. And what that really wasn't all that worth for the trouble that they had. I think to execute that rift trail properly, you needed to go earlier. Perhaps, but it it's going to be hard to find a oh, better time than look, that. Look at when... has Weaver's Wall. Mm -hmm, he's and running Tom to this volley, but he doesn't have the support. Well, Tom Kench is coming over, and he does have ultimate, so we have to see if there's going to be a play. Seems like MNRL and CC Dean, uh, they're too smart. They, their game sense is really good. As you said, high-quality gameplay right here. They know of the Tom Kench Global, of the Talia Global. Uh, they're backing off, seeing the reset right here. So CC had really invested into the next couple of minutes of the game by using the Rift Herald when they did. They knew it would probably do the maximum damage to the turret when CKG was dead and couldn't actually respond to clear the minion wave or stall the Rift Herald. So by getting it to do the maximum amount of damage it would, even if it's not necessarily going to kill the turret right now, means if they can find time to get the rest of these members into the mid lane and force out CKG from wave clearing effectively, they will be able to get that turret. None of the other turrets are particularly low. No, top turret is uh, full health. Uh, the Kalen lane has only done... Julian! Oh, he's dead. Julian, no flash, and that's just an easy kill right there. It's that's... down. Yeah, it's still down, and for the second time when Julian does They're collapsing flash, on the mid lane here, both teams. Yeah, both teams. Uh, Tom Kench ulting in, bringing in Prototype. Uh, four men on this turret looking to get this first turret blood. Ult from Prototype? Where was that going? Uh, anybody? Any clue? I don't know about that one, Proto. But anyway, Stumpy going down. Is he going down? Is he night pop down from Evan RL? Looks like first turret will go down for Maryville. Pick up the first turret blood. There's five members. All five of Maryville are still there. I have the question that prototype ultimate. You did do a good job getting the first turret, but where was that one going? I think he thought there was someone above him. I do believe Misty was coming down from the top lane, but he hook shouted over the wall, so he didn't actually get hit by that arrow. So I don't, I don't think Frodo just saw visions in his head. <laughs> I do believe I it. Not. It was aimed at something. You really don't want to be having some kind of mental illness when you're playing the finals. <laughs> I'm going to give Frodo the benefit of the doubt there. And uh, Maryville's going to be happy with that one. Once again, right. they find the first blood turret. And that will give them a pretty big advantage. Frodo and uh, West don't have any kill participation yet, but they're going to be just fine. Neither does the other bottom. 
Well, one good thing about that is farm, farm, farm. You see the Ash does have Infinity Edge. The Caitlyn does not yet. Is going back for a buy. Does not have the gold for an Infinity Edge either. That's the thing. Picking up a Zeal for Evan RL. There's a little fight going on mid lane. A little skirmish. Nothing. Eh, not too much happening over that. Uh, Misty Stumpy still being a nuisance to Sasuke in the top lane. But uh, Infinity Edge versus BF, Pickaxe, Zeal, uh, Dagger, Extra Dagger for the Shiv. Pro the way Prototype can stick on and the Q from Ash being able to stack and give you those extra damage, extra DPS. Uh, this you're gonna have to watch out for Evan RL. You're down. Pretty here. interesting that um, Proto's actually opted for the Infinity Edge first item this game. Last game he built Essence Reaver first and yeah. then went into the Hurricane I build. But this time he's opted to start out Infinity Edge first, so that signals to me is less worried about his mana problems and his uh, casting his ability as often as possible and more concerned with that DPS and team fight instead of constant poke with volley. Well, I do think uh, a benefit of the Essence Reaver was keeping that ultimate up. And now you see four people looking to converge down on bot lane. Sasuke does have teleport. But this game, you Wall's don't have up. that much chance you see. Wall is going up. Uh, the wall, oh, yeah, the wall is available. I thought it was right now. I was like, oh, I'm looking at the mini map. But uh, there's not as much chain CC to chain off of the arrow to engage. So I do think prototype with adaptive build here. More damage, more damage, more damage. Especially to counteract the Camille, the Nocturne, the Caitlyn, the Karma. Where it's kind of like a high burst DPS. Being able to dish out as much damage as possible will be critical for uh, prototype. Similar to a, lot of, a lot of action going over in this bot side. But not really direct confrontationally between the two teams. We're seeing a lot of this kind of... Oh, oh prototype is going Prototype, well, was it called? But here's the, the team. Debate? Yeah, there's four uh, four going down. Arrow still is available. The wall still available. Tom Kench also available. And Sasuke was teleport. Uh, Bugs that coming down, making his way to the bot. Doing a good job for that. Dean just walking out, clearing vision. I think it was okay. Prototype already plays aggressive naturally, and that was good. He knew he had his team around him. And the Talia does make it back up to mid lane. Doesn't miss much farm. In fact, still has the CS lead right now. I do think it was a bait from the side of Prototype. Yes. Uh, hoping his team would actually pull the trigger with that Weaver's Wall, and Cat Ears was down there to help out as well. But they were a little scared because Misty Stumpy could have teleported behind them, and Bucksack, of course, doesn't really care about the wall when he has Paranoia available. So it could have quickly been a 4v4, and they didn't really want to take that under that bot lane turret. So kind of wise in the back off in this situation. But with the vision control that they've gotten in this bot side river, look at all those pinks. They're going to be happy to just set up for the next dragon and potentially finding more picks in the bot lane. That's right. Uh, another thing to note, I know we didn't mention this earlier, double TP coming out of Columbia College's game, whereas Maryville is opting in single TP with a heal on the Talia. Last game, Julian did take cleanse in his Cassiopeia match against all the CC, but a double teleport could mean a quick response to the five-man for Maryville as well. Yeah, and this mid turret being down for Columbia now means that Maryville has so much more map control. And even right. though the tur their own turret is low, it's not actually down yet. So it's very hard for Julian to get the shove all the way out. And that's really part of the reason why Maryville has gotten all this control in the river and is going to be able to start up the second mountain drake. This would make them do very, that very will fast be if they get it. Critical. Good uh, wall. Like a fight. Great wall. Keeping CC. I don't know if you should have wrote it. Oh, head up, pulp rise. Oh, what's this? Uh, team fight. Paranoid going in. Bugsack going in, looking to Bucks die. Turn with a smite. Smites the dragon. Stays alive. Kills uh, Bugsack. Prototype dishing right out full Julian. damage. Will he lose vision? No. Julian takes the one. You went there. Uh, other than that, disengage. Sasuke finally coming down with the teleport. Ornold only hits one. Looking to dive the trundle. Oh, West does a great job devouring. Trying to keep him alive. Good shield. CKG, CKG. finds one. Oh my God. Just Can you find two? Seven RL. Stumpy going oh. way too deep. Oh, Stumpy gets the kill or double kill? Double kill for CKG, double kill for Stumpy. Overall, three for three trade. Who comes out in favor? Let's look at the kills. Three kills on the Messi Stumpy. Hard carry for this Columbia College team. Looking over at CKG, four kills on him now. Looking to see a repeat carry performance. What a messy team fight. That That's really, really was. Nice it, it started out with a great wall placement from CKG, but why did he ride the wall? <laughs> yeah, no. He put it straight into wall? the waiting arms of Dean and Bucksack ready to follow up there and had to be immediately eaten by West after he was already chunked out. And that left Prototype to fight Julian in the top side of their uh, blue side jungle. And that was just so weird. You, you never really fight those kinds of team fights. And you, it's really mm -hmm. hard to prepare for them in a competitive setting because you're so used to um, just trying to 
per, uh, perfect that front to back strategy when you have this standard team composition like Maryville has. They have the tanks in the front, they have the carries in the back, and they have the Tom Kinch to help them out. When Ash is on her own like that, there's no Tom Kinch to help her out. That's really where she falls. Uh, even though it was the Karma this time, it could have just as easily been that Nocturne or Camille, and that would have been lights out a lot quicker. Well, it looks like Maryville's the first to respond uh, after the reset, picking up the second Mountain Drake. Props to West. This is one thing why I put so much emphasis on the Tom Kench and Pick Band for both game one and two. You saw the power that the Tom Kench had, as we see demonstrate right there, waiting for uh, Evan RL's ultimate to pop. So you devour then, and now the Kalen ult's on full cooldown. Ooh, CKG eating a trap. That is a lot of damage, actually. Is, He's trying his best to wave clear. You're seeing him use the seismic shove and the Unraveled Earth on the wave every single time because he wants to keep this mid turret desperately alive. The longer they hold on to that, the more easy it will be for Maryville to actually shove out the mid and get vision control because they lost a lot of it uh, actually committing the time to do that Earth Drake, but they have a good amount of time until the next one spawns. There's no Rift Herald yep. on the map. It's now barren, so they have to worry about that. So getting in as a team here to roam up, they really need Prototype to actually threaten this though, and he's basing right now. First item thorn mail for the orn. <coughs> that is and the I like is, it. Where's the AP? I like it too. You're right. It's only karma. And right now karma is showing signs of building towards full DPS instead of a more supportive mid lane build. We do see PC the Morello Nomicon coming out. The Proto. first one is time with the stun. Oh wow! What a major Q! What is that damage? As I just said. Full AP build, Julian, ridiculous play right there. Solo kills prototype, looking to solo kill West as well. Will he get the double kill down by? West can't kill West him. able to devour, there's a, a turret going down in mid. They're losing mid. West can't kill him, the shield's ridiculous. Playing around the minions, oh my gosh, what positioning, using the minions. Uh, there, uh, uh, CKG's gone too. Dead. Oh, and the, it's a What is Maryville doing? Kill. What's Maryville doing right now? You can't be split up. Julian, playing out of his mind on this Karma. Full AP, showing why Karma does so much damage. Absolutely pop prototype right there. And now the TP to keep the minion alive. Genius letting the headshots from Caitlyn do work and the Sheen Frogs from the Camille. This is a free inhibitor. Columbia is going from the outer mid lane nowhere. turret to a free inhibitor all in one push. That and bot not to lane mention, was just completely destroyed kills. by Julian. He just teleports oh. in to back them up. That There's still two down for the side wow. of Maryville. CC is wow. just going to be able to get a free reset in here without even having to worry about the Baron. They just completely took the lead in this game from an even setting. Absolute disrespect to the Mantra Q for Karma. That AP ratio is ridiculous, but props to Julian. Excellent job playing around the Mings to deny the Tom Kench Q for the stun. Playing around your uh, Mantra W being able to heal you. And now, is this a fake reset, giving time for Maryville to think they have safety? Uh, Columbia College looking to play around the Baron Dance once again, but wow. That swing, incredible. Now Columbia College, one and a half thousand gold lead. Uh, looking to reset. Julian picking up the Merlin Nomicon and another Needless. I do believe Evan needs to reset. Sitting on 1,700 gold right now. You'd like, some, you'd like some kills on Evan, too. Of the nine on his he team, would. he's zero, one, and one. So he has very little, uh, the least kill participation in the game, along with his 80 carry counterpart uh, prototype. They've really but, not been getting involved in these fights, or at least not winning them. But you're right, but the good thing is, still farming. That's good, you're not falling down in farm, because we do see the shiv pick up. Both uh, AD carries have the Infinity Edge and one zeal item. Looks like uh, going for a QSS right now instead of opting into the second zeal item in terms of Evan RL, just in case, uh, you know, uh, Ash ult comes in, hits him somehow out of that tank, as Caitlyn should be playing back, not frontline Caitlyn. Maryville progressing on Julian the Julian flashes into the arrow. arrow. Flashes into the arrow. He's going to die. Going up. Well, Dean. Oh, wow. West behind. That's, wow. Look at West going behind. Why would you flash the arrow straight into the Ornal? Great play. Oh, West. Evan RL dealing with Misty doesn't damage. have TP. They're going for this. 5v3. The second they saw Misty down in Bali, it was right away, right into the ultimate. There's the wall, oh. too. Paranoia coming in from uh, the Bug Zag, looking just to deny vision. Oh, hits. First side getting eaten up. Uh, Bugs, they had to flash out. And Seismic shot! Dealing so much damage. Evan RL with the EQ combo. Baron did not reset off of that. And now you're just banking on the fact that, oh, hey, you got tier one, tier two. Well, Columbia College. Hmm. Huge play for Maryville. You Julian have just to... flashes straight into the Enchanted Crystal arrow that he was trying to dodge in that 
Follow up CC from the seismic shove answers in a kill, and then West was behind them for the flank, so they're able to turn directly onto the Baron, knowing that Misty burned his teleport in when in the play where they lost their own yeah. inhibitor. So they're able to use the Weaver's Wall effectively to zone off for that Baron. Bucksack had to kill himself trying to paranoia in for the steal, and then they were just able to get the Baron. And well, they're back to a gold lead with the Baron buff. That's right. But my question is, you're Misty Stumpy. Everyone knows that. You in this stage, everyone's tracking summoner spells. Why do you show bot when you know all five of Maryville are dancing around Baron? Because as you saw off the reset, all 10 uh, champions were dancing around Baron. You show bot, that's automatic go button for Maryville. You have the best engage in League of Legends. Well, not the best, but in terms of being an ADC, it's more the best. You know, actual instant CC. Crazy. And now you're just getting, you gave up Baron for free. Your team had to suicide in terms of trying to stop the Baron or pushing out the waves. Now, yes, you did get turned. The two turret West can be picked off. West does have flash though. Just in case. He's got Stumpy. Stumpy was not able to shield. He's dead. Oh, on the Stumpy. Stumpy is dead. Huge Ornol. Three man Ornol going in does not hit him out on the charge. Alistar going with the flash combo. Oh, is West gonna live? Sasuke so gonna live. Ooh, great block by Cat Ears West picking up. Uh, Base size right shove. Now. Paranoia. Will he, he go? He can't go in. No, he can't go in. He's uh, a third health left. You can't go in. The seismic shove just negated that instantly. Evan RL with the shiv against these very mains. The shiv nerf and 8.6 doing less da uh, does not do the bonus damage to the main. Prototype game. just got destroyed. Oh my god! Oh my god! Flush. What is this damage coming from Julian's karma? Uh, dodges out on the W. Cat he w has it back up already. Oh, it's, uh, Tom gets ulting in. Oh, here's Tom. There's Evan's the gone. Flank. What a flank! Uh, knocks off FNRL. FNRL can't get escape. Yeah, he's dead. Uh, Go around Julian. Great. Julian has to look for escape. Misses the seismic shove, but will die anyway. Can they Dude, end? Their carries are down. They have Baron buff on this wave. This could be yeah, absolutely this huge for Maryville. It's at least up. an inhibitor. 30 seconds on both the carries. Five man. Uh, it, do you do it right here or do you back off? I, the minion waves de uh, deteriorating. I would, wouldn't do it. You have look both at these waves, waves, though. They have so much standing gold so to get pressure. for the side of Mary. So Maryville. much pressure. It's three turrets to five. Both of these outer turrets are falling down to minions. You still have the Baron. There are four turrets on the map outside of the base. That can be 4,000 gold in the pockets of Maryville. And then you're looking at an 8,000 gold lead with the better scaling team fight composition. Well, once again, Maryville pick up the third dragon of the game. And it's an infernal. We finally get the first inferno of this series. Looking at it once again, another four dragon potentially for Maryville. This is just what a swing. What a flank from West on that Tom Kench, being able to ult in Saskio. And this is a rank two Tom Kench ult. This is a very far distance for the ability to travel across the map. And beautiful flank set the, all three of the remaining Columbia College members that were alive up against the wall. Beautiful in game. Great, great Kench ult, absolutely. And CKG is cutting in and out of these fights so effectively, protecting Prototype even when he gets Karma Mantra queued. Just hitting the seismic shoves in such great times where he's even hitting multiple members, chunking them out. Evan RL yep. didn't stand a chance once he got hit by that one, just chunked out. Then the Tom Kenshaw comes behind him. He's dead. Julian can't run away. His flash is down. He gets pillared and chased down. And that's an inhibitor traded back when you got their mid inhibitor 10 minutes prior. Well, I think Julian's damage on the Mantra Q kind of baited Columbia College to stay in that fight. They were already low health bars, but seeing just the DPS on the prototype, they're thinking, okay, yeah, we're out of this, we're going to win. But phenomenal play, as you said, by CKG with the seismic shove and being able to hit those Qs. Stumpy, once again, but this time does have teleport, but is splitting away from the team. Just took a top turret down, and my game closed. I don't know what's happening. Now we're back in the game for me, at least. <laughs> oh, wow, that was scary. But uh, I, I'm not a big fan of Stumpy splitting i get the purpose but the team fight from maryville is just too good right now especially the 4v4 i think once julian's mantra goes they're down, scared they're of the team fight them. you're right they are once julian's mantra goes down that's your time to shine but you only you can only manage one thing do you manage a shield to protect your team because with the amount of ap you have that's a big shield or do you manage a q try and take out prototype Right, and we're at the point where Caitlyn had to buy a QSS to get around all of this CC and is sitting on only the Infinity Edge and Shiv for damage. So she's right in that mid-game lull where she really falls off and Ash picks up in the team fight. You see uh, Prototype has that Ornn upgraded Infinity Edge. It's actually called the Molten Edge. 
That's going to be doing Ooh. a hell of a lot of damage when combined with that Essence Reaver completed and the Runons. And still has that stopwatch too. Prototype has that in his back pocket if he gets jumped on by yeah. Bucksack, by Misty Stumpy. And that could be huge. That's a great purchase because if you die in these crucial team fights and Columbia finds a way back in the game, that's your lead thrown. But there's so much standing gold. They're going to get this outer. They're going to push for the inner. All while Misty's in the bot lane and Evan's answering that mid. Well, speaking of item purchases, you look at the Orn. Thorn Mail, Frozen Heart, Ninja Tabbies. Even though Ninja Tabbies did get nerfed, still, all that armor against his full AD team. Julian can't do that much consistent DPS. Here they go. Up, oh, Ornolt looking for the engage. Ashul Goodbye, Dean. On to. That's so much. Dean? Wow, just... Oh, no, he's alive. Wait, he's Misty! Oh, with the help of Misty Summoning looking in TP. Just ult, or TP's in and then ease away. Uh, great job on the shield from Julian and the ultimate by Dean to stay alive. Uh, flash is burned, Julian flash burned, Bugzak flash burned, Dean flash burned. All four in Ash Arrow and uh, Ornal. All right, so here's here's why Misty split. Because you see that they were down, they were up in turrets about five to three. But yep. by Misty putting up the pressure in these sidelines, it makes it so that Maryville is not able to pick up that standing gold as effectively. If they got those four, tur four turrets without any incidents, they probably would have been up about seven and a half, eight thousand gold right now. As it stands, they're only up five thousand, and that's because yep. a lot of the work Misty was able to do. However, he does now have TP disadvantage, so if he goes bot lane, a similar play could be made by Maryville to force the Baron. Especially with Baron coming up in thirty seconds, Dean's trying to clear out as much vision as possible. But looking on the side of Maryville, three control wards. Saskio, 3-4 Cat Ears, 3-4 West, and 2-4 CKG prototype being greedy and holding onto that stopwatch instead of buying the all-beloved control ward. But still, that's a lot of vision coming from the side of Maryville. And they're going in right now to clear everything, set up their own vision for Baron. Wow. <laughs> Very tense moment in the game right now. Columbia has to be low on their morale and confidence. Not losing a game prior to the series now, potentially staring right at being down 2-0 in a best of five. That's three match points for Maryville if they win. Dean, no flash. You can't really be getting... And will Maryville turn right away? No, looking to go... Uh, uh, Misty Summy doing a really good job pushing mid out. Full damage uh, on the Camille. No Titanic, no Sterox Gage. It's Trinity Force, Ravenous Hydra, Guardian Angel. Uh, mid hit and hit did just respawn as well. Do you need tank items, or do you have to bail out go full damage right here if you're Misty Stumpy? Um, the, the, what's really going to win in the fight is not building tank. He needs to either provide split push pressure or execute a carry in a team fight. But Maryville's up, trying to fish for something. They got they, Julian. They do, they no do flash. Have Julian. They do see Stumpy up. Ult. Oh, uh, will there be any? Oh, good, good paranoia to deny. Misty can't be right here. There. Misty can't be here at all. Dean doing as much as he can to stall out. Uh. Once again, once they saw Misty Where's in the, the ball lane, you have to just engage right there. Going for there's the wall right now. Wall coming in. You're just a little bit ahead of me, and there's the wall for me. But I think that little freeze really a little bit messed me up. But there are three still. Or Misty actually four on this side of the wall. There's the stopwatch. Misty watch. doing something. Oh, Misty going to the five man engage stopwatch on the prototype. As you said, as you called it, I'm a little bit behind still. So God bless me. Let's get in ring. Uh, but turning around the five, trying to pick up one kill on the Dean. The Guardian Angel was popped by Misty. Looks like a full disengage right here. Low health bars on both sides. Mary That's the fire drake. College. But yeah, you're right. That is a fire drake. Fire drake spawning uh, uh, right now. And with the help of the fruit plant. I don't know the official name. Holly fruit? Not holly fruit. CC What's is it? taking this opportunity where they're forfeiting the fire drake and trying to get back some of this vision control because they've been pushed out so far. Misty being in the bot lane without teleport meant Maryville got to... Uh, get all that vision control in the top yep. side around Baron. They're going to have a lot of work to do clearing out the pinks, but it looks like Columbia is fighting for some of that control back. It's so hard for them to win these team fights, though, because Caitlyn now had to go for Lord Dominic's regards because of the Thornmail uh, on Saskia when the armor being built up in general with all these tabbies. That's the consequence of going this strongly AD composition and not getting ahead early. But as you're seeing, another consequence of it is that Julian is doing that much more damage. You're right, but the Abyssal Mask was picked up by the Orn, and now Maryville's looking to come in, clear out all the vision that was just set up. Kaelin going back, uh, we'll see what the buy is. Uh, the second zeal finally, something that Kaelin really needs, especially getting up to the 80% crit, helping uh, supply the headshots. One good thing that Maryville cannot clear in favor of Columbia College is the Scuttle Vision. With the Scuttle Vision, they will know uh, if Maryville does try and engage on the Baron, 
which I don't think they should right now, but the second it goes out, you have to be worried if you're college. Very tense. It's been tense for the past 10 or so minutes where they've just been dancing around this Baron, but there's so many more dragons on the side of Maryville. It's Once again, 4-0. Once again. Yeah, once again 4-0, and this is an in-combat Cloud Drake. The Earth is not going to really be doing a whole Ooh. lot of these fights, but the ability to kite in and out, as well as the uh, additional damage, is really helping them out in these traditional team fight settings. And when you have West to just pick up a carry when it's needed, you're going to be okay. Prototype did have to use a stopwatch, but CKG still has his, and now they're going to be dancing around the Baron, but CC have pushed mid control. That's right, but the Baron It's going down so started. fast with double it Earth. Is. There's the wall. Double mountain drake. It's gone. I'm, I'm going to trust in your opinion that it's gone because guess what? My <laughs> paranoid going in doing absolutely nothing, uh, especially when Maryville's clumped up like that. Uh, and now they're just running at top. They do have a top wave in favor for themselves. And it looks like Stumpy will be trying to push down mid, maybe going for the inhibitor, doing anything he can to stop that. They're sending Sasio back. Nothing. Yep, Sasio's on the way back. I think he's not going to be able to do anything about it. Yeah, they no, cancel no, no, it. Sasuke they know they can't. Can 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 Misty what doesn't have a wave. Race? Is this a base race? No, Misty doesn't have a wave. He can only get the inhibitor, and Maryville know this. They well, no, I, back I think they're going for the base race. Ornall coming in. Uh, Misty's still up top. Uh, prototype Ash holding in. Sasuke's uh, base. Here Sasuke goes Dean. Base. You go on the flash four rise hits two on that. The W from Karma hits the Trundle. Uh, shield from the Karma. Ah, I'll Buxack takes Where's so much there? damage. Buxack taking a lot of damage, but it does have the G. Misty's a. playing the long Super con. G. He really is. He's going around. There's a ginormous flank coming. There's an there. Oh, they're looking for it. They're looking for it. West does have ult, though. He can't ult somebody out. CKG has stopwatch and Tom CKG Ken. also has stopwatch. Prototype does have GA. Four man back right here. Prototype. Oh, no. They're looking. Sasuke uh, ulting in. Great uh, flank. Will Stemmy do anything? Great flank over there. Great TP cancel. Misty's Tempest down. Go on. Misty. Somebody ulting. Look uh, at that bot wave. Happen. That bot wave is ridiculous. Once again, Mary Devil showing dominating uh, wave control. And now, looking at the gold, 7k gold lead. If you're Columbia College, was it worth it trading that one inhibitor? I know you do stall out, but now you have two, uh, one inhibitor now. It's all they can no do. Point. It's all they can do, George. That's They're not it. winning these fights by any means. You're seeing how hard it is for them to actually kill CKG or Prototype with West at the helm in such a strong tank line. And this stopwatch the was actually sold. Oh, no, it wasn't so. It was built up into Azania's by CKG. He's going to have this so often. Every single fight, he'll be able to get out of it. And that's even more armor on his side to not take damage from these executing carries across the board that CC have. And Misty's still dead. They're pushing mid. Misty's still dead. If you look at Prototype, he has a QSS as well as the Guardian Angel. Uh, the five man trap line, not going to do Proto. much for Caitlyn. Uh, Proto has GA. Proto does have GA and he has QSS. Good to note right there. Uh, the second zeal item was finished for the Kalen, by the way, so 80% crit on that Kate. Doing that oh yeah, we're late game. We are late game. So, if he has time, there's not that much armor on the side of the Trundle, it's only the Orn. But, as we mentioned, West is still there. The Orn's still in the front line, a lot of engage right here. Uh, Julian's still dealing out a ton of damage. That little pesky bannered up... Uh, They're buying time here. for the banner. They are the ba buying time. They can, just, they can just walk Stumpy. straight into the bot lane once it's done. Stumpy is back up, though. Bot wave is pushing up. The inhibitor has been destroyed finally. Good call on that. Rotating down the bot lane, clearing out vision in the bottom side jungle of Columbia College. Mm, Misty Stumpy's going top side. They have Evan the answering wave. the waves as well as Misty yep. right now, so they could definitely get some damage on the turret. It's so low. If this is because three inhibitors, that would surely he's be the game. The wall. Hit the inhib. All right, so the wall is out. Dean's on that side of the wall with ultimate. There's Proto's so low. Proto is so low. Wow. Two GAs. Uh, what a paranoia. The QSS gets popped, GA gets popped, both GAs get popped actually. Uh, but Proto's alive. The fight. Ultimate by the Orn does me well. Saskio or Mr. Stummy going dead. Another GA popped. That's, uh, that's three for nothing. maryville has got this. Three for nothing right now. But uh, lucky for Columbia College, both damage dealers and wave clears are still alive. The Baron buff is gone. So there is a possibility to end, but wave clear is. They're walking in the waves. The they need to. They need to try and end this here when they have the five v two. They're they're walking in all the waves they possibly can because the carry's still up. They're still they're trying their damnedest to wave clear. It's going to be hard. Kill Evans cutting effectively. They need to hit these turrets before their spawns. They have ten seconds on Nocturne and Tom Kench. Tom Kench is alive right now. They got Evan. The Alistar. I like that. Evan is dead. Evan's dead. That's it. This is the primary damage dealer. And will that be it? The second next turn goes down. Nexus is wide open. Only three, two, one, and that nothing's gonna happen.
Bucksack just now getting alive, and that's game two. What? 2 0 for Maryville. 2 0 Maryville. CC hasn't lost a game coming into this series, and they are just making such a statement series of wins. They are one game away from making a huge upset with their main roster. Now, now, now. I don't think it'd be like a huge.